The high-profile legal proceeding concerning the deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson, a 35-year-old woman, and her friend Ronald Goldman, age 25, remains one of the most infamous criminal cases in the history of the United States. This trial revolved around O.G. Orenthal J. Simpson, a former American football icon who faced allegations of the homicides but was ultimately acquitted. Nickel Brown, who hailed from Frankfurt, West Germany, was O.J. Simpson's second spouse. Her family subsequently relocated to Garden Grove, California, in the United States. At the youthful age of 18, Brown embarked on her professional journey as a waitress at Daisy, an upscale club nestled in Beverly Hills. It was during her employment there that she encountered Simpson, who was already in a marital union. Following his divorce from his initial spouse in 1979, Simpson entered into matrimony with Nicole Brown in 1985. Their lavish wedding ceremony unfolded at his extravagant residence in Los Angeles' Brentwood neighborhood. In that same year, the couple celebrated the arrival of their first child, a daughter named Sydney, and three years later, they welcomed their son Justin into the world. As described by those who knew her well, Nicole was an incredibly dedicated mother. She steadfastly refused help from nannies and housekeepers, taking on the full weight of nurturing her children and managing their extensive household. In addition to her responsibilities as a mother, Brown also successfully ran her own interior decorating business. However, the couple's relationship began to unravel. Simpson not only engaged in extramarital affairs, but also subjected Nickel to both verbal abuse and physical violence. Friends and family members reported seeing bruises on Brown's body on several occasions. At a New Year's Eve gathering in 1989, Simpson openly issued threats against Nickel's life. In 1992, after enduring a prolonged period of mistreatment and unfaithfulness during her marriage, Brown took the courageous step of initiating divorce proceedings. As part of the divorce settlement, she received $433,000, a monthly alimony of $10,000, an upscale car, and an apartment. Even following the divorce, Brown continued to confide in her mother about her ongoing apprehension regarding Simpson's persistent stalking behavior. She once expressed, I'm terrified. I'm driving to the gas station and he's there. I'm driving and he's following closely behind me. Tragically, in the early hours of June 13, 1994, both Brown and her friend, model Ronald Goldman, were tragically found deceased near a condominium complex in Los Angeles. The couple had sustained numerous stab wounds, making Simpson the primary suspect in the case. Rather than surrendering to the authorities upon learning of an impending arrest, Simpson opted to hide in the trunk of a car driven by his friend, soccer player Alan Cowlings. This triggered a protracted law enforcement pursuit that was broadcast nationwide in real time. The attempted escape captured the attention of over 95 million viewers, and hundreds of Simpson supporters took to the streets carrying protest signs. Eventually, Simpson was apprehended at his Brentwood, California residence and officially charged on July 22, 1994, to which he entered a plea of not guilty. Robert Kardashian, a renowned attorney in the United States and the father of Kim Kardashian, had a deep-seated friendship with O.G. Simpson. After the bodies of Ronald Goldman and Nickel Brown Simpson were found, there were reports of Kardashian leaving Simpson's residence while holding a Louis Vuitton garment bag. Prosecutors expressed suspicions that the bag could have potentially contained either blood-stained clothing or the murder weapon. However, it's crucial to emphasize that these theories were never confirmed in a court of law and the murder weapon itself was never discovered. The trial began on January 24, 1995, with the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office, led by Marsha Clark and Christopher Darden, presenting domestic violence as a potential motive for the murders, both before and after the Simpsons' divorce in 1992. Law enforcement amassed substantial evidence implicating Simpson. His blood was detected at the crime scene, 
while Brown and Goldman's blood and hair were discovered in Simpson's vehicle and home. Additionally, one of O.J.'s gloves was located at Brown's residence, and another was found outside his own home. Furthermore, bloody shoe impressions uncovered at the crime scene were determined to match shoe prints associated with Simpson. Simpson's legal defense, famously referred to as the Dream Team, included notable attorneys such as F. Lee Bailey, Robert Blazer, Sean Chapman Holly, Robert Shapiro, and Alan Dershowitz. Later in the proceedings, the renowned Johnny Cochran assumed the lead role for the defense team. The central argument put forth by Simpson's defense revolved around the assertion that the evidence from the crime scene had been misinterpreted by officers from the Los Angeles Police Department, particularly Mark Furman, a detective who claimed to have discovered a bloody leather glove at Simpson's residence. The defense team argued that the glove couldn't have belonged to Simpson because it appeared too small for his hand. Additionally, they alleged that the police might have planted other crucial evidence in an effort to frame Simpson. During the time of the murders, O.J. was grappling with rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. The defense contended that his physical condition would have rendered him incapable of confronting two adult men. Besides a minor cut, Simpson displayed no significant injuries on his body. Both the limousine driver who drove O.J. to the airport and the airport employee who obtained his autograph reported nothing unusual about Simpson's appearance. In contrast, Ronald Goldman, who held a black belt in karate and was in good physical shape, had a body covered in injuries, including cuts and scratches on his knuckles, suggesting that he had engaged in a prolonged struggle with his assailant, lasting 10 to 15 minutes. The trial, spanning over eight months, featured the testimony of approximately 150 witnesses. Public opinion on Simpson's guilt or innocence often cleaved along racial lines, with most African Americans supporting his innocence, while many Caucasian Americans believed in his guilt. The trial was watched by millions of viewers on television. After just three hours of deliberation, the jury rendered a verdict of acquittal for Simpson, who subsequently pledged to continue the search for the real killers. In a civil trial initiated by Nickel Brown's family in 1997, Simpson was found responsible for battery against Brown during their marriage and was ordered to pay $33.5 million in damages. However, he ultimately settled for only a fraction of that amount. In 2007, Simpson once again faced legal troubles when he was arrested for trespassing in a Las Vegas hotel room and for the theft of sports memorabilia that he claimed had been stolen from him. During the incident, Simpson held the hotel staff hostage and brandished a gun, making threats. On October 3, 2008, he was convicted on 12 counts related to this incident, including armed robbery and hostage taking and was sentenced to serve 33 years in prison. Simpson was eventually released on October 1, 2017.